Each of these container types provide a certain level of mobile responsive design, but perspective is more powerful when you combine all of these containers. So combining containers allow you to create all kinds of user experiences. You can build hierarchies, you can nest containers inside of other containers, you can have different layouts at different sizes, you can have different layouts at different levels, and you know it really puts you in complete control of all of this by letting you combine containers in endless numbers of ways. And so just a quick way to show this is what I mean by this is we can start with a particular, let's say that we start here with a flex container on a particular view. Well, when I put components inside of it, I can put containers inside of this. So if I look under the container section, I can go and put a column container inside of this. And inside the column container, right, I can actually put then a you know, a, a tab container or a breakpoint container that's there. Inside of that breakpoint, right, we can have our small and large, and that small and large could have a, a coordinate container or it can have a flex. And you can see we can put all of these things, we can really combine these things together. So it's not, not showing a good example here in the designer, but you can just drag and combine these in very unique ways. And the best way to see that is look at some examples that are out there that we have. And that is our demo project and our quick start feature that we have in Ignition. And so let's take a look at these in more detail. So let's go over to our browser. I'm going to go to our perspective demo. This is at demo.inductiveautomation.com. And we have, we, we try to showcase some mobile responsive design in different projects that we have here. But the main one, if you look here, is that we're first using the off the, the dock view, the off canvas uh, area. So this over here on the left is our navigation. And this is a docked menu. And so when I get to a small display, we're going to make this go down to, let's say, iPhone 12 here. So when I go down to a small display, you can see that that navigation is now off canvas, but I can click on the hamburger icon. Now, the hamburger icon shows up on a small display. And so I can bring that menu in. When I go back to a large display, I have enough real estate where I can show that menu automatically there on the left. So this is a great example first of, of using that doc you know, view for mobile responsive design. And of course, the content within each of these pages are also utilizing various container types and layouts. This very first one here is using our column container. And so let's go to uh, responsive. So you can see that as uh, it's a large display, if I go smaller, you'll see that things start getting moved around and then everything will drop into a single column when it gets down to that. So that, that container, that column container is a perfect one for things like this. Let's go back to a large display. This, this HMI screen is a perfect example of really pretty much combining every layout strategy that we have or every container that we have in perspective. This particular view starts with the flex. As I said, a lot of times we start with flex. Um, the reason for that is that this label at the top, this real-time status nav header, I want that to stay fixed at the top. I don't want it to resize. I want it to be up there. As you can see, it's, it's up there at all times. The content below is actually scrolling. Uh, but we start with the flex so that that can stay at the top at all times. Then inside here, this is another flex where each of these are, you know, these labels are oriented so that they'll wrap, but the height of that will be automatically detected and we get scroll bars when it's super tall. So we start with the flex because of that scrolling that we want to have on the screen. And then this right now, this uh, HMI screen is actually a breakpoint. So that breakpoint is on a large display, I'm showing a coordinate container. So here's is a coordinate container where I'm looking at this HMI and I can you know, do all the stuff that I want to do with it. But if I go to a phone size, that breakpoint, we hit that breakpoint. So that content there now has switched to a flex layout, and I'm showing this data in a more of a, you know, in as these rows in a vertical form. The same relevant data, same templates and things we're using, just a different view of that. That's why we use the breakpoint. So large is that coordinate, and the small is this flex. And so great example of we combine so many together, right? The flex is starting, then the breakpoint, and then the coordinate, and another flex. Uh, and that could have been a tab. It could have been this. It could, have been, could, could have be any container type that you want. Coming down to the bottom of this, this one actually is a column layout. So the this little, this little dashboard idea. So if I were to go bigger, let me make this a little taller too. So you can see now that on medium display, I get two columns. And then when we go smaller, we drop those columns down, right? So we go medium. It's now two columns. If I go large, you can see that it's now you know, all three columns there 
uh, of that data. So we've really combined a ton of different strategies in with this one screen here in our demo project. So it's a great example of it. Now, another paradigm is like with uh, his history data, if I go to a tabular one, where on a large display, we want to see a table. We want to be able to use sorting and all the things that a desktop could do on a table. But when we get down to a mobile device, let's go to an iPhone here. I don't want to see a table anymore. I don't want to scrunch it. So often these cards, a card layout where you can see the data and have it flow vertically is a very common paradigm for that. So a lot of these different areas uh, utilize mobile responsive design. All these demo projects use it as well. So the water wastewater project is a great one where if I look at it here and then go to a phone, you can see we we'll often use that column drop idea, bring out the navigation and you know use different strategies. And all these are dissectable. You can play around with, with how they work and how they're gonna adapt to these different sizes and what containers we actually used in those projects. All right. So the last thing to point out here is we have our quick start project. Now, when you install Ignition for the first time and you, you get prompted with, do you want to install the quick start? And that's a very great way to get going with Ignition. It shows you a lot of good examples. It has this Ignition 101 section where you can see um, in terms of perspective, all the things that you could do with it. And it has, but it has a section dedicated to layouts. And we show six different layout strategies here. And these are just very simple. Uh, so they're, they're designed so that you can go and see exactly what containers and how it's used. And then you could just change those boxes with your content, essentially. So this first one is this list panes one is a scrolling list layout that supports a drill down information style. So what this means is that let's do this one and go into our, our mobile responsive design. So on a large display, you see I've got these selections over here, A, B, and C. And I even have these list items I can select that would show me the content over here. So on a large display, I want to orient, I want to organize it this way. But when I get down to a smaller display, I completely change the, the view of that. So at the top, I get the buttons for selecting between these different sections, and I get a drop down for all the individual list items, but instead of having them be the organized and left there. So a good example of that paradigm. The fluid one, this is really showing that reflow content, the mostly fluid style that we are showing where basically here as we get smaller right you know we're we're dropping columns down and basically being able to hide the dock and it gives you a really good example of all of that but it's filling in the whole content there so whereas the box fluid is where we can maintain some of the margins so you can see that the content may stay fixed size and centered there when it gets bigger but when it gets smaller of course it'll get smaller and then ultimately get down into that single column. So a good example of that as well. The scrollable canvas is one that basically shows the, you know, the on-demand view that we can bring, and it has the fixed position views and things that are in that canvas. You know, and you can see kind of sort of how those you know will maintain its its orientation with that. And then the component grid. This is one of the most common ones, this is using the column layout that we are talking about. But you'll notice that what it does is it uh, changes the, the position of the content. So here are the filters and actions, navigation to the top. If I go smaller, you'll note that now the filters, actions, and navigation are at the bottom, right? So, because that's a lot, oftentimes mobile devices, you want the navigation to be at the bottom on there. So again, a lot of good examples of this. And then this last one, just a coordinate container with fixed scrolling uh, or percentage based we've seen examples of. All of these are available for you all to play around with and to look at. So hopefully with showing you all the different container types, different response, the design strategies, you can start figuring out, you know, and sketching out how I would start within a perspective. What would I start with and sketch on a screen, you know, what I want that to look like in a large display and a small display. And then that will help you figure out what particular container type to work with.